Hi, I'm Phil Molto and welcome to Snow Builder Television. On today's episode, I'm out here on the trails with the Snowcrest Riders from Gravenhurst, Ontario. We're trying to open up some trails after a late season start. It's been really tough with a lack of snow and a lack of cold temperatures. If you look over my shoulder, you'll notice I'm using a Scandic 550 to get the work done today. And speaking of a utility sled, well, that's the subject for our test riders on today's show. And let's ride. STV is sponsored by Yamaha, revs your heart. Kimpex, fueled by fun. And by Skidoo, never stop pushing. The Skidoo Tundra is a staple when talking about utility machines and that's why we're going to dive a little deeper into the Tundra. What does one do when given the opportunity to ride a Tundra? Well, the first thing you do is that you remember why Joseph Armand Bombardier developed his Skidoo. It was built to conquer winter and that is exactly what this sled can do. In any of its forms, configurations and engine sizes, this sled can muscle its way through any winter. But enough about the tough guy roll, this sled can also be a pile of fun. Yes, it can haul any load, pull any load, and go anywhere where the white stuff dares to land, but it can also generate a huge smile to the person sitting at the handlebar controls. When I first attended Snowshoot in 2007, the other test riders could not figure out why I liked utility sleds and work sleds, but then they saw the huge smile on my face that I always wore when riding them. A Tundra will never let you down. They are rock solid and designed to get through a tough day, and if they can get through that work day, you know they'll be ready for the play moments on the way home. With a front end designed to push through any barrier and a rear setup that goes over any obstacle and deep snow challenge, you know the Tundras are designed for off-trail riding. Load these sleds up with a heavy load and they'll do the work. Load them up with a fun day of plans and they will always deliver. Yamaha in 2016 steadily improves on what they had in previous years in the VK Pro, but this year it gets a revamped engine which is a real game changer. Uh, new for 2016 for Yamaha is the uh, VK Professional 2. Uh, this machine is kind of special. This was one of their best selling machines um, in general and the majority of that is to the European and Scandinavian markets and specifically Russia. So it was, you know, getting overdue for uh, a bit of a, a facelift. So the uh, Russian Yamaha team actually worked really closely in developing this machine. Um, so they've spent a lot of time with uh, the new hood, new bodywork, um, and the, actually the biggest thing is it actually gets the uh, the Genesis fuel injected motor out of the uh, the Vector and the Venture um, from 2015. So that's what the customer has been really wanting. Um, I can tell you on the trail when you're cruising with this thing. Uh, it's got tons of power, so you know when you're in Quebec or if um, customers in Europe, you know they're out cruising, and you know you need power. It's got it, so it's equally at home at, um, at low speeds, you know, through the woods and deep powder as it is on the trails uh, in Quebec cruising. And you know it's got a big gas tank. It's got lots of good range on it. Uh, it's efficient, lots of flotation off trail, and it's warm. Uh, the new windshield really uh, gets the wind around you, not a lot of buffeting. We were out in minus 30 this morning and that's a warm machine to ride. Um, they put a lot of attention to detail. Uh, it's They've done a really good job uh, uh, re-engineering this machine and uh, giving it a nice facelift and uh, I think it's going to pay off for them. Polaris brings us the Y-Track 550 from overseas use this year, bringing it back into the utility market in North America.
Uh, Players have brought back the, the Wide Track 550 this year to the North American market. It's been a big seller overseas, especially Russia. It's still the old trailing arm design, but it's still effective um, sled to uh, ride off trail, comfortable on the trail. 550 engine is a economical, well-proven engine, and uh, the flotation is excellent. It's a very good entry level for a family sled that's you know bombing around the cottage, uh, doing backcountry trails. It's uh, great, great for that uh, type of family. You had it in the bush today. What was it like going through the bush, the trees? The uh, very maneuverable through the trees. The, uh, we haven't got a huge lot of powder here today, but uh, it's still very maneuverable. It's turned sharp. It's got uh, a very large footprint to keep it on top of the snow. And uh, yeah, it's uh, fantastic. STB has had a lot of experience on the Bearcat over the years, and the improvements in 2016 still shows why it's one of our favorite models from Articat. The 2016 Articat Bearcat um, comes this year in the uh, new uh, Pro Utility chassis. So you get the, uh, the tall spindles, you get the new Arctic uh, front end, um, but what's really uh, unique on this sled for 2016, um, besides the chassis, which is a lot just in itself, is Arctic uh, starting to um, use their ATV side-by-side uh, -side Wildcat uh, four-stroke engines built in the USA by Arctic Cat. Um, this is a low horsepower, uh, twin cylinder, overhead cam, four-stroke. Um, it's mounted tip back towards the, the rider to lower the center of gravity. Um, top end, 7,500 RPM. It's not a fast sled. This is a uh, uh, entry level utility sled. Great for going out ice fishing, um, long track, um, slide action, fully coupled suspension. Found it very nimble, super wide skis on the front end, uh, great flotation. So just a real simplistic four stroke modern chassis uh, snowmobile with a big windshield. Today was minus 20. Nice and warm, great handlebars, uh, good hand grips. Um, I could really see uh, a lot of people up in uh, northern uh, Ontario, northern Manitoba, northern Saskatchewan that you know like to get back to their cottage, do some ice fishing, um, buying the sled. Snowmobiling is about having fun, but sometimes there's work to do. And to get that work done, you need a utility sled. Let's ride. We snowmobilers have heard many times about the work that goes into our trails, but it is only when you see it firsthand that you get a true appreciation for the work that is involved along with the challenges. The rocky terrain up here requires a lot of snow and a lot of cold. There are rocks to be covered and swamps that need to freeze before any trail work can begin. Once that work begins, you can witness firsthand the stages in the trail preparation process. As we worked our way through the day, I was able to witness the many challenges that the Gravenhurst Snowcrest riders face. With a Scandic and a bunch of bush tools, I was able to join in with a club to help get the trails ready for the thousands of Ontario snowmobilers to enjoy. What's up? I can get some mud on that sled if you'd like. Hi, Muddy Phil.
We're here on behalf of Snowcrest Riders, uh, trying to break some trail open, brush the trail and pack it down. It's been a tough year for these guys. There hasn't been a lot of snow and or frost to get in the ground. There, there is a ton of work, especially this year. This has been the toughest year for the clubs and I'm sure every one of the clubs will tell you the same thing. Lack of snow, lack of frost is a killer for these guys and they're out there every day busting their humps to get this trails open for us to ride. So the volunteers are what make this sport go. We see some really rough trails, but we actually saw some pretty good trails today. We did, yeah, and again, that, you see the difference. If the, if the groomer can get down, pack it down one time with the, with the drag, it makes a huge difference, and it's a good cold snap is what we really need. It officially is my first ride of the season, mid-January, believe it or not, and yeah, of course, we always have fun. It's always great to have come up with the, guy, with the guys that, uh, that make these trails happen. A lot of work. A lot of packing, brushing, getting all the trees out of the way, it's, it's just endless. Branches are a nuisance for you in the cab? Yeah, you gotta watch those windows because they're expensive. Like right now, if I had to guess the uh, like the date by the progress of the trails, I'd say it was mid-December. So there's, there's a lot of work to do yet. Yes, we have all heard it before, the hours of work that are required, but if each of us popped in for one day, it would speed up the process, eliminate volunteer burnout, and best of all, it will rekindle that social fabric that has been a key part of snowmobiling since its earliest days. This winter, when you were out riding, I hoped you took a moment to appreciate the hours of volunteer work that went into getting those trails ready for you to ride. Next fall, don't hesitate to volunteer. It will be a very positive experience for you because it was certainly a great experience for me. A low snow winter like we've seen in 2015-2016 means that a lot of snowmobilers need a trailer to get their sleds to the snow. Here at Snowmobiler Television, we have a great partnership with Triton Trailers. And here's Paul McNichol with the stuff you need to know about trailering your sled. Today when we were riding, we saw the whole specter of 20 years of snowmobiling. We saw the open deck trailers with just a shield on it. We saw the clamshell style covered trailers, which is a tilt and load. We saw the hybrid trailers with the drop down rear ramp tour, but still looks like a clamshell and we saw V-nose enclosed. And that's been the transition from the years of starting at the tilt trailers with the open deck, all the way that everybody wants to become a V-nose enclosed tower. I think the change is snowmobiles have got more expensive. The components have got uh, more expensive to repair. So you want to keep all that stuff as protected from the elements as you can. And then I think the other thing really is to do with people, I mean, we used to have pickup trucks with wind down windows and rubber floor mats and now we have power everything and leather seats so we just demand more. Yeah, it's funny to see that uh, it used to be a make do, whatever you had that you could use year round was uh, good to get your snowmobile where you needed to go and now it's uh, more specific to the sport. Most people that buy snowmobile trailers it's specifically for the snowmobile, and the snowmobiles stay in it during the summer because that's their storage shed. You know, here's a funny thing, and behind me here is a good example. So a lot of people want to stick with the mentality that your snowmobiles going down the road should always face forward. In a V-nose enclosed, if you actually drive in the front door and out the back door, it's less work. You handle the sled less times, to getting it in position in the stagger load trailers and it actually tows easier because the balance of the trailer is more centrally located over the axle taking tongue weight out of the out of the tow vehicle and therefore it'll actually tow easier and use a little less fuel behind me here is our newest innovation called a triton TC-118LR. What we did with this trailer is we took a, a trailer that we had made about eight years ago and we noticed that it was uh, one of our hardest trailers to tow because of the suction on the back door we, we believe. So basically what we did is we dropped it down, 
put wheel wells in it and broke the suction. By doing that, we're on average 10% better in fuel economy. With a 2015 Tahoe, we actually saw a 17% increase in fuel economy. Um, a lot of people are intimidated by the wheel wells in the trailer, but as I've demonstrated, they're actually less obtrusive as going down a trail and driving over a lot of the obstacles on a trail. And the advantages are that the ramp door angle is a lot less, so therefore it's actually easier to drive in. We um, came up with this concept based on, we had this trailer because people were asking for something easier to load than the clamshell trailers. And the ramp door seemed to be what they were looking for in the price range. Um, a few years after we designed the first TC-118 and then we designed a TC-128, 12 feet long, 8 feet wide, we brought out a TC-167, which it was 16 feet, 7 feet wide, and you stagger loaded the snowmobiles, much like you do in our PR series that we were showing earlier. Um, it actually towed easier, being a bigger trailer, it towed easier than our TC-118. So we went back and looked at the TC-118 and figured out how can we make it easier to tow. The wheel wells seem to be the answer and now we have this new trailer that's hit the market this year and being received very well by the public. When we were connecting the trailer this morning, you had a couple tips. My favorite is the wiring. Most people want to lock their trailer tongue when they're going down the highway. I've never seen anybody get it stolen going down the highway. What I recommend, put a pin through your coupler and when you go to latch that pin over with the safety, put the wiring through that horseshoe shaped safety. That keeps it up off the ground and uh, will keep it from getting caught up with slush and being pulled out and then essentially dragging on the ground. So it's just a neater, easier way to do it. One thing that Triton offers is what we stand for, quality. So although we need maintenance, we need less of it because we put the components in the trailer from the start that take less maintenance so our wiring doesn't have connectors in it. That eliminates a lot of problems that you are going to see and that's why people probably don't think of a trailer as needing maintenance because they don't have as many problems with our product as the others. For decades, the only thing I heard inside my helmet was the sound of an engine, but Jeremy, that's changing these days with technology. Definitely is, Phil. With Bluetooth technology nowadays, you basically have the ability to pair te your telephone to one of these communication devices and allows you to play music in your helmet while you're riding. But there is other features as well and benefits, and, and that's communication, uh, rider to rider communication, rider to your de mobile device, and it allows all kinds of uh, new freedoms that we didn't necessarily see just a few years ago. That's interesting because nowadays we're so used to hearing things and also being tuned in where a person may want to ride for a few days, but some reasons they still have to stay in touch with the office. So you could be out riding, still get messages from the office or talk to the person who's three slides ahead of you and let them know you've got a problem with your fuel, listen to music. This is, this is pretty neat. It's incredible technology. It, it really is. And, you know, with the Euclear uh, device that we have here in front of us, uh, you have the ability to pair two units together, but you also have the ability to pair multiple units. And that allows a group with a, a leader and, a, and the person at the end on the tail being able to leapfrog from one unit to the other, you know, to, to communicate front to back of the group to and make sure everybody's there. How easy is this to install? Quite easy to install. Um, what we can do is do a little bit of a demonstration here and show you how, uh, how straightforward it is. So with this particular helmet, what you would do is you've got uh, these speakers which also contain the microphones. And essentially what that does is it mounts up in your helmet and it allows for cross triangulation of the sound and picks up your voice. So it's a boomless mic system. You basically, it comes with Velcro and you would set it up inside your helmet um, essentially in where your ears typically are. And 
as simple as a few seconds and you've got that in, you take your wire and tuck your wire down underneath the edge of your helmet and all you're left with is essentially the plug-in. At that point, what you do is you take your unit, install this clip, which can be either adhered to the helmet or a removable clip. So essentially you slide this onto the easy mount, affix it, plug in your wire and you're ready to go. Now pairing it is very straightforward as well. It's a matter of taking the two units and following the instruction booklet and in a few minutes you've got them either paired to your mobile device or paired to each other. And I used this last year and it's actually quite simple. It's a simple one touch up and down. There's no, you don't have to look at a menu here. You just simply touch buttons and you've got it. You got it. It's a three button system. Uh, no complicated, you know, um, programming. It essentially um, follows through a very simple process to get it paired. So a few things that you need to know about your system is basically uh, charging. Charging is as simple as plugging your into a standard wall plug in with the USB and plugging the unit in to charge overnight. Essentially, uh, range on these units, you compare two units together and you're looking at about 500 meters. On the HBC 100, on the HBC 200, what you're looking at is approximately 700 meters between each unit paired together. And again, what are the benefits of the system? How can, you, how can we use this on the trail? Well, you can use it in essentially three different ways. You can use it for entertainment, you can use it for communication, to the outside world through a mobile device, or you can use it rider to rider communication. So entertainment, efficiency, and friendship all on the trail. STV is sponsored by Ultimax Belts. Performance proven, performance driven. Triton Trailers, the difference is in the details. And by CKX, wear your passion. Thanks for joining us on today's show. Remember, you can always follow us on Twitter and on Facebook and our web pages, and you can always sign up for our newsletters. And you can always email me directly, phil at snowmobilertv.com. We'll see you next week here on the snow. I'm on a utility sled, as you can see over that shoulder. There's a blooper for you.